Hi, I'm Kiki at Cockroach Labs, and in this video, I'm going to help answer three important questions on the topic of serverless databases. After a quick background, I'll cover a foundational question. What is a serverless database? I'll present the salient characteristics of serverless and describe what it means for a database to encompass these characteristics. Next, I'll tackle why you'd ever want to use such technology. This is where the rubber meets the road. We'll dive into some of the benefits of using a serverless database, especially for developers. And finally, I'll answer when you'd use a serverless database. What are some of the use cases for serverless databases, and when is the best time to harness their power? So let's start off with a quick background of serverless. While serverless products are not always developer-centric, many are, and there's a good reason for that. When developers create software, it needs to be hosted to be used. But getting software onto servers is perhaps easier said than done. Servers need to be designed and configured with your specific software or business needs in mind. Servers need to be sized, configured, secured, maintained, all the above. Historically, getting your software into a server environment required coordination with a tightly controlled infrastructure or operations team. Bottlenecks, both technical and bureaucratic, resulted in delays, waning developer productivity, and crushed morale. But in recent years, cloud providers came to the rescue with ways to quickly get started with infrastructure, from bare metal servers to VMs with tons of options for configurations. Eventually, spinning up servers took no time and barely any red tape. The advent or democratization of cloud-based infrastructure precipitated a great shift in power for developers. But with that power came much, perhaps too much, responsibility. It came with an implication that developers would share responsibility for running their infrastructure, picking the right VM, right memory, storage, number of nodes, zones, whoa. Managed cloud products try to address this issue, and although they provide resources to help manage your infrastructure, they still require capacity planning and other upfront planning from users. Enter serverless. Serverless products are designed to strike the perfect balance. Serverless products are cloud-based platforms with varying degrees of low to no operations, ideally trending to zero operations. With serverless products, the boundary of user interaction is designed to exclude the server and its related architecture. Developers are unhindered in getting started, unburdened with operations, unconcerned with orchestration. They are empowered to deliver. They don't have to pick the just right configuration for day one. They don't have to update the configuration to be production ready on day in. So what does it mean for a database to encompass serverless characteristics? A serverless database is one whose infrastructure is designed, sized, configured, provisioned, secured, maintained, and dynamically scaled by the product company. As with other serverless products, it responds automatically to changing loads, giving you more resources when you need them and tapering off when you don't. This means you can simply pay for what you use. A serverless database is always on, meaning it's resilient and fault tolerant. And with serverless databases, developers only need to connect and build. That means there's no dealing with nodes, clusters, or other physical concepts. You interact with the database and leave the outer architecture to the product itself. That's the magic of serverless databases. The serverless class of products removes barriers without adding burden. The benefits of having a development team that's unshackled by database operations are many. Developers can be hyper-focused on logical data modeling, schema design, or other purely data-centric activities related to what they're building. Since serverless databases require no specialized knowledge of the product architecture, developers can focus on creating their application features without this distraction. That's right, no more Kubernetes for your CRUD team. With serverless databases, developers can quickly and easily engage in low-cost, high-value experimentation. It works on my computer is no longer satisfying for us. We need to run our applications in prod-like conditions while we're building, and we need to be able to start without a budget. Another benefit of serverless databases is developers don't have to worry about capacity planning for the database at any point in the project. Serverless databases meet you exactly where you are in your software development journey, whether you're just getting started or well along the way.
As you consider the many ways that serverless databases benefit developers, the world of use cases really opens up. While specifics will depend on the serverless product, if your application uses a database, then generally it can use a serverless solution. If you're building a new application, testing out an idea, or want to trial a specific database technology in a production-like setting, a serverless database can fill in the gap for you. If your application has unpredictable loads or loads that are predictably spiky, a serverless database is a good fit. If you lack the bandwidth to focus on operations or managing a database, serverless is good for you. If you have an operations team, but you're looking to invest more in research and development than in operations, you should consider a serverless database. And finally, if you need to move fast and break things or not break things, a serverless database is what you need. Now you may ask yourself, what is CockroachDB serverless and why does it matter? Well, having access to a distributed SQL database as a serverless product unleashes a wave of opportunity and productivity that you are not likely to see using traditional or even NoSQL serverless products. Soon, you'll understand why. <laughs>